you look good out there. And listen, a couple of things I wanted to I wanted to share with you. First of all, is that um, you know this is Christmas week, and uh, you know there's this beautiful, beautiful little passage in the scripture where um, in Matthew's gospel in the in the fourth chapter it says, you know, those sitting in darkness have seen a great light. And it's a quote from Isaiah. And Isaiah is, is uh, speaking to the people that are just waiting and waiting and waiting for something amazing to come. And in the waiting, it feels a lot like darkness. Anybody ever felt like you've been waiting in the darkness? And uh, we even have a saying like, you know, don't keep me in the dark for too long. Don't keep me in the dark. So this is the season where literally we celebrate with lights because we realize that God has come and it's a special thing. And so I hope as we celebrate this week and as you celebrate it, hopefully you get to come and be a part of our celebrations here. And if, if not, if you're traveling or I won't see you, I just want to wish you um, a beautiful, beautiful Christmas and, and re- remind us that the light has come, right? And so um, I was thinking today to just talk about what do we do when we're waiting in the darkness? You know, what do we do? Everybody has periods in their life that feel dark, and, and they feel like they're waiting periods. I'm, I'm just sitting here waiting for something. So um, I want to read a, a scripture. It's from James, and uh, in James, he, he talks about the, the blessing and it, it certainly isn't going to feel like it or seem like it at the beginning. Um, but just hang in there, and, and I'll explain. James chapter 1, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. So when you go through difficult times, Um, it feels like a test of your faith. And why does it feel like a test of your faith? Well, it feels like a test of your faith because usually when we think of having God in our life, we feel like we have this, um, you know, this this, uh, unstoppable force for good that if things aren't going the way that we want, we would just say a prayer and God would turn the thing around for us and then we can go on with our life. And when we pray and things don't happen, or when we pray and God doesn't seem to answer, or it seems like doesn't even hear, it's a test of our faith. Um, The other day, we were playing, you know, Charlie likes to play all these imaginary things, and it's always, you be this and I'll be that, right? So it's always... You know, I'll be Princess Belle, and you be the Beast, right? I, you, I'm this, and you're that. I am this, and you're this person's daddy. And we're always playing. And so the other day, I got a major upgrade. Just out of the blue, she goes, okay, I am this person. You be God. <laughs> Talk about an upgrade. I get to be God? What exactly am I supposed to do in this role, Right? And um, so I asked her again to make sure that was my, my given title. I called mom in. <laughs> make sure the whole family knows. <laughs> and that you be God. I thought, never really thought like that. That could be. And I started to think, you know, what would it be like if you were God? Anybody... You remember the old Jim Carrey movie where he gets the power of God? You remember this? Bruce Almighty? Yeah, and so how, just think about this. How, how, what would it be like? In other words, ask it this way. How bad could we mess things up? And I started thinking about it, and I started thinking, you know, there are so many things in life where we pray, God, I want you to get me out of this situation. So he says, perseverance must finish its work so that you 
may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. It's as if you and I need to go through, need to persevere. Who can look back over your life and think about some things that you've had to just persevere? There just was no way around it except just to go through it. Man, if you don't have your hand up, I really worry about a few of you. Because honestly, if, if anything's true about life is that there are going to be some seasons in life and you are, there, there aren't any ways, there's no shortcuts. By the way, when you go through a difficult time or when you face adversity, the first thing that most of us like to do is I just give me a couple of steps as to how to get out of this, right? We're used to fix it. I fix it. I'll, I'll do this, and then I'll do that, and then we'll go. And sometimes you get into a place in life when you realize there is no fixing this one. There's no fixing this one. There's just enduring it. There's just going through it. And when you go through it, you have all these things in your head that you'd want to fix or want to change, but you realize at some point, I can't. I just have to go through it. But in going through it, we realize that we develop something inside of us that cannot be developed any other way. This is worth thinking about for just a minute. Because in the culture that we live in, um, we're used to you just, just apply yourself. You know, you're bringing your child up and, you, and they're having a struggle. And you say, well, you just work harder. Or you just apply yourself or you just think. And they do certain things and then they get a better grade and they get rewarded and they go right through it. And we, we, we tend to paint a pattern for them like if you just apply yourself or you just work hard, you will just get through those things. And sometimes that's true. And sometimes it's not true. It's just you have to go through it. What do you learn from getting all A's in school? Well, Chris, I know you're not against that because that's all we talk about in our home. I, I get it. But what do you learn? Well, I learn math, or I learn science, and learn good, 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 all good things to learn. What do you learn when you struggle? Now, some of you, you have, you know, four children. They're all straight-A students, and they're all five-star athletes, and we love you. You're fun to be around. No, yeah, we're happy for you. That's great. That's what it is. It's great. It's wonderful, all right? But the reality is, is anybody with me? Stay for a little bit of reality. The reality is, if you have more than one, usually they're a little different, and you got one that flies through school, and you were just ready to write a best-selling book about how to get your kids to ace everything until you had number two. <laughs> is this true? Like, wait, 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 who, who brought this kid up? <laughs> and all of a sudden you realize that, wait a minute, all, all of these things that I thought, I'm, they're not working out exactly the way that, that I drew them up. Some things you learn that can only be learned by going through difficulty. Just endurance. Just one day, one step, one thing at a time. When people are lacking, when you are lacking, when I'm lacking, in the Scripture it says, one of the things that we lack is this character that's developed. And the character that's developed happens when things don't work out. So, all for try hard, all for do good, all for all of that, as long as we help, as long as we somewhere on the side say, and when things don't go your way, and when you don't get all A's, or when you don't get a promotion, or when, then you persevere. I was telling the, I do this early morning Facebook thing for folks that, you know, can't be here on Sunday morning, and um, I was thinking about the, the perseverance of earlier generations. So j just, just for a minute, I'm not trying to be hard on us or whatever, but 
Um, you think about how unbelievably blessed we are. And I know some of you have some struggles. I'm not minimizing your struggle. I'm really not. But just take one step back and think about how unbelievably blessed we are. Every once in a while, a thing I would love to do doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to do anymore, but I would pick up my grandma and we'd just drive around. Love to go drive. And we'd go to different places where she grew up. So we would drive to the, you know, the farms of, of southwest Canton, which are now being overrun with subdivisions. And so this is where, this is where my, my father grew up on a farm. And down the road, this is where they met. Horse and buggy, right? This is where they met. These four corners right here. And you walk into an old Methodist church with a little cemetery down there off a ridge road, and she'd say, and this is where your aunt so-and-so. And then we'd walk through all these stories, and then we, this is the one-room schoolhouse that I went to up to fifth grade or whatever. That was it. Get back on the farm. You start to think about what they persevered through. I mean, when you eat, the stuff that goes into your table comes from the ground outside your back door. You understand perseverance at a different level than, I'll say it's certainly me, and probably a lot of, of us in this room. But they just knew how to persevere through so much. Now, generations have gone on in, in, a, in a society that's built on the consumer. And the consumer is, uh, you know, the, what's the saying if you're in that business? The customer is always, someone's taught people. See, you knew that. It was it's instinctive. You knew that. And so you know that when you go into a place, I'm right. No matter what, I'm right. I love being right. And, and you build a sense that I'm entitled. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not casting aspersions. I think a lot of this, listen, I think a lot of this is baked into our subconscious. You know, most of you aren't that arrogant. You walk in there and just say, I'm entitled. But deep down, we've been so um, immersed in this culture that we really do feel that way. And when things don't go the way they're supposed to go, we don't know how to act. Perseverance, I think, is is struggling in our culture. There's a lot of things in our culture that people are, you know, social scientists are starting to study because they just don't, they can't figure out why a nation that's so blessed financially has so many other mental health problems. Now, I'm not here to tell you that I'm the guy that has all the, I'm not, so I'm saying. But it might be worth thinking about that just persevering, just not getting things when you want them Man, is that hard. Do you know every single day with a three-year-old is a battle of perseverance? <laughs> it's just a war of attrition. And every single thing that she does is painstakingly slow. Now, before you see her today and judge the fact that she's not wearing a coat, she does have shoes on, but just, just give me this. It is a war just getting out the door. Who knows it's a war just getting out the door? Every parent should just get a gold star for just showing up with a church with a kid. Just a gold star. You're here. Okay? You got out the door. I'm just trying to justify the fact that I don't have a coat on her today. But anyway, <laughs> think everything. you, you, you and, and when she wants something, it doesn't, make it, it doesn't matter if it makes any sense. It doesn't matter if it's good for her. Just all of a sudden, this is just what I want. And I'm not going to consider or talk about anything else. And I am going to make life as difficult for you <laughs> as I can because I want a cookie and I want one now. What if we just started giving people what they want when they want it? In other words, what if I was God? I would make a really bad God. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that you look back over your life and you think, some of those things that I prayed for or wanted so badly, I wouldn't have even, today I wouldn't even want. How many can look back and say, thank God I didn't get some prayers answered? For sure. So, 
for just a few minutes, I just want to share with you, what do we do while you're waiting? Man, you have to get creative. I don't mean the other day, it's just like, we go give Charlie a bath, and it's like, I'm, this is going to be eternal. This is going to be eternal. And I, you know, if you guys have tips, please send them. Email, please. Because I, I don't know, you know, my wife, she's telling me, you, you know, you're doing it all wrong, and I'm sure that I am. But at the end of the day, it's just like, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want a 40-minute wrestling match in the tub. It's so wet. <laughs> so I just, I just take an iPad and just entertain myself while she's doing her thing. Does anybody, how many know sometimes you just got to let them do their thing? So what do you do when you're waiting? God, I just please get me through this. So I'm just going to share you four things. First one is just this. When you can't change your circumstances... You can always change yourself. Now, everybody, look here. Some of the greatest people I know right here, honestly. But we all can still change a little. We all can still grow a little. We all got a little bit of work God can do in us. The thing that can change always is here. This can always change. I can't fix this circumstance. And, and you want to obsess and you want to focus on fixing that. And it's not going to get fixed. So you turn inwardly. You look inward. And you say, God, is there anything while I'm waiting you would like to change in me? And just pause. And later on in James, it talks about if you deceive yourself. Anybody here ever deceived yourself? Huh? Now, think about it. <laughs> if you deceive yourself, you're pretty much toast. Why? Because if you deceive yourself, you don't know it. You don't go, boy, I just love deceiving myself because, you know, then I'm so wonderfully ignorant about how stupid I'm being. No, you're convinced that you're doing what is good or right or helpful for yourself, but you've deceived yourself. This is a horribly vicious cycle. You're doing harm for yourself or to yourself, and you believe you're doing good to yourself. And there's all these people trying to help you, and they're all ignorant. None of them know anything. Just you. So when you're going through something, the one thing that you, maybe you can do is you can pause and take a look inward and say, you know, is there anything on the inside that God would change in me. Second thing is this. When you're going through something and you're just waiting and that's all you can do, this might help. See if there's someone else that you can help. See, is there someone else you can help? You not be, may be able to help in a big way. You know, maybe you're going through a financially difficult time. You don't have any finance. That's okay. Maybe you could pick up the phone and encourage somebody. Maybe you could write somebody a letter. Maybe you could give them uh, a note of encouragement. In other words, and have you ever found this to be true? When you're going through something and you find you summon the, the ability to reach out to somebody else, you felt better almost instantly. Isn't that something? When you're going through something, if you start to reach out, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say like in, in, in some masochistic way where you're, you know, you're just this uh, person that you know, you're just giving and giving and giving. And, no, I'm not talking about that. But I am saying sometimes you have to look up. And the only way to get out of the struggle that you're in is to just find somebody else and see, is there some way I could reach out to this person? The story of Christ is not the story uh, of someone who just had it easy. But from the very beginning, Jesus endured one thing after another, after another, after another. My little story with Charlie gets better. A few days later, you know, we're, we're trying to keep her interested in the Christmas story and all of that. And, of course, all of the other parts of Christmas are 
quickly get to her with Santa Claus and presents and cookies and all that. So um, we have this Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus little figurine. It was up on the it was up on the mantle, and I, I said to Vicky, let's put it on the let's put it on the kitchen table because it was to me I was, it's a little lost there, and I wanted Charlie to see it every day. So it's on the kitchen table. It's this little figurine, and then she'd say, can I can I play with baby Jesus? And I'm sure that's good company, you know. So I let her, you know, play with the figurine. And then a few days later, Dad, you be Jesus. I'll be Jesus' mommy. You be Jesus. I'll be Jesus' mommy. Okay. What would it be like? What would it be like to be Jesus' mommy? Talk about endurance and Jesus, all the things that they went through. And all along, the mom is there. She's there. And later in John's gospel, she's all the way there at the very end, the bitter end. This wasn't the story of easy street. This wasn't the story of just do all the right things and then all the doors will open for you. This was a story from the beginning to the end of endurance. And at the end, think about this. Jesus on the cross, he says to John, behold your mother. To Mary, behold your son. I I don't know about you, but I mean, I, I get one little injustice coming my way, and I start crying like a baby. Wah, poor Chris. This is, here's Jesus dying on the cross, and he's doing good for his mom. He's taking care of John. Why? There's something that's inside of you that the best thing that can happen when you're going through and enduring something, you Look out for someone else. Try it. Third thing is this. You just sometimes have to let go and trust God. They call it the testing of our faith because faith is the idea that I I can't control all of the outcomes. I just have to put this one in God's hands. Do you remember the story of Joseph in the Old Testament where Joseph is imprisoned? And um, he's only, from what we can read in the story, he's only been trying to help and do good, but he keeps getting knocked down. And he finds himself in prison only really for trying to help. And there's this little phrase in there, and it says, and the Lord was with him. And the Lord was with him. And the Lord was with him. Somehow, it became evident to everybody that he kept his trust in God. He refused to let all these things make him bitter and angry, and he just kept trusting. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand, but I know somehow God's going to work through this. So what do you do? I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to trust God. I'm just going to trust God. I really think God should have fixed this. I really wish God would have fixed this. I don't understand. In the scripture it says, God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So there's just some way where you just have to trust. Um, anybody ever been in this situation? Or Charlie's not going to just let go and trust? Like, no, I'm going to still keep demanding what I want. And like the clock's ticking. Like, no, really, um, there's going to be a whole room of people, and they're going to be waiting for me, Charlie, like here. So, and the feet start kicking. I, mean, I know your kids are angelic, but this is mine, all right? So the feet start kicking, and no, oh, I don't want, I want, I'm still, I want to do this. Someone bought her a little makeup set, right? Like pretend makeup. Thank you. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> Can we go now? 
so there comes a time where it's like, there is no more negotiating. We're just, we're leaving now. Let go. But I think some of us, this is what we do. We're still kicking and we're still screaming. And, and why? Because at some point, you just, you just have to say, this is bigger than I can understand. You know what prayer can do for us? Prayer isn't just so that we can get all the things that we want, like a Santa Claus list. But prayer can do for us, if we will let it, it can help us to let go. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Remember that prayer in the garden? Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. You're saying something there. You're saying, man, I think I'm smart. Man, I think I know what's best for me, but perhaps I don't. Last thing. Take your life into little daily chunks. Just one day. Just one day. When you're going through, when you're persevering, when it's darkness, here's all, just take one day at a time. Jesus taught us to pray like this. Um, Give us this day our daily bread. Just give me enough for today. You know why? Because that's all you ever have in life anyway. All you ever have is today. That's all you ever have. You don't have tomorrow. I'll tell you one of the great, uh, one of the great things that, they, that you do, you know, you take all these pictures of your kids because it's so great to hold on to them. I got more pictures than I can ever look at already. I'll never even look at them. You might have done this insanity. We can't, almost can't help ourselves. Why? So we can lock ourselves into what used to be? It's... Our, all of our trouble comes from too, too much thought in the past and too much thought in tomorrow. And Jesus taught the wisdom of today, just today. You have to seal them off. Whoever saw that... Uh, Whoever saw that movie, Mars? Was it Matt Damon? He gets stranded on Mars, anybody? And they, they, he's, just, he's in this, like, dome. And before you get into the dome where he lives in controlled atmosphere, there's, like, a hallway. And in the hallway, there's the door to the outside elements of Mars. And then there's another door to his. And there's this, it's an airtight chamber in between. And you don't have one door where you just open it and see what happens. You seal off this door. Right? You come here, and then you oh, only when that door is sealed do you open the next door. That would change your life. You've got to seal off the doors. Where do you live? Between yesterday and tomorrow. You live in today. Seal it off. Thank God for it. Right? Thank God for it. Lock her down. You can't go in there. You're in the middle. I mean, today, there's so much you can enjoy today. If you'd stop thinking about tomorrow and the next day and worrying about when this is going to be over and when this is going to happen. Jesus said this, worry is a worthless waste of our time. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Don't worry about tomorrow. And each day has enough joy and it's if you look for it. But if, if you make a choice to live in these little day, just m- m- once you learn to do daily, you will learn to do moment by moment. It'll, it'll come natural to you. This is helpful. You'll learn to live moment by moment. Man, this is good. I'm sure we've all done this where we're running around frantically, missing all the stuff that's in front of us. But the one thing that people will say over and over and over and over again, for all the challenge of, of wrestling with a three-year-old is, don't blink, man. Don't blink. Don't blink. But you know what we're all trying to say ourselves is the very same thing. 
Enjoy what's right there. You know? This little cute little Christmas dress just hung it up on the dresser. Charlie's, you know, you know what she wanted to wear? She just picks out some just god-awful boots that somebody gave her. You know what I mean? Like rain boots. Do you know what I'm talking about? And this is, this is what happens to a lot of us. A lot of what we're doing is we're idealizing something and thinking, yeah, that, this, is how it's, this is how life would be perfect. And life isn't that way. Life is just messy and beautiful. And when you realize that every single day is a gift from God, every single day, will change how you approach whatever you're enduring. Let's stand. We'll have a prayer together.